Hi everyone, Fika here with NAR Dojo where we discuss pathological narcissism, spirituality, personal development, and raising your awareness. Welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to all returning subscribers. In today's video, we're going on a journey through the intricacies of the human psyche. Today, we delve deep into the shadows, exploring the profound link between shame and pathological narcissism. As we navigate this complex terrain, remember the words of Carl Jung who said, I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. Now, in order to discuss pathological narcissism, we must discuss shame. This is because pathological narcissism is based out of shame. Oftentimes on the channel, you will hear me say that narcissists are shame-based people or narcissists are rooted in their shame and they're unable to move past their pride or they have pathologically low self-esteem. Self-esteem so low that they probably have to look up to see it. All of these really are the same. Narcissists and shame go hand in hand. They carry a lot of shame. This is shame from mistakes made in the past, uh, the shame of being inadequate, the fear of criticism, etc. This shame may be hard to notice initially because they hide it with their grandiosity and false sense of superiority. To admit to shame means to become vulnerable, to let go of control, and to face the inadequacy head on. This really is not in their skill set. Before we delve any deeper into today's lesson, I must lay the groundwork by discussing our multidimensional nature and specifically our emotional intelligence, emotional awareness, or emotional maturity. So understand that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are spirit operating a human body with the access to different tools or faculties, namely our mind power, our willpower, and our emotions. So this means that you are not your body. You have a body. For example, if you go to somebody's funeral, then their body is going to be in the casket or their body was cremated. However, you do not have access to them anymore. At least not through that physical body or that physical vessel. We could even use the example of an amputee. So if somebody loses an arm or a leg, well, they lost an arm or a leg. They did not lose themselves. Because again, you are not your body. We're also not our mind. Our minds are tools. We use our minds to make decisions. Our minds generate thoughts. Additionally, your mind is not your brain. Your brain is an organ that is a part of the physical body. You are also not your will. You have a will. And you can simply think of your willpower as your discipline muscle. If you have a weak will, then you're going to be impulsive or compulsive. And then if you have a really strong will, then you're going to be highly disciplined. You are also not your emotions. You have emotions. Emotions are energy in motion, and most times we should allow our emotions to pass through us. So we have to let go of emotions, or we have to learn how to adequately let go of emotions. Especially negative emotions, which we will get into, is very dangerous to harbor negative emotions because most times you will see where these negative emotions manifest themselves physically in different diseases or different dis orders. So who are we? Poor you. We are spirit operating a human body with access to different tools or faculties. Instead of spirit, you could say essence, life, life force, source, source energy, prana, the observer, chi, the watcher, etc. Again, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are non-physical beings having a physical experience. So in the case of a funeral, understand that John is the life that is lost. 
John didn't lose his life. John is the life. And technically one doesn't lose one's life. Our spirit moves on to another dimension. This is where the sayings like energy cannot be created nor destroyed comes from. John is no longer occupying that physical body. So when he was physically alive, then he was an embodied spirit. And now he is a disembodied spirit. Understand that we all come from the unmanifested and that is exactly where we are going to return, the spiritual realm. Understand that the death process is the inverse of the birth process. So your spirit occupies a body, then eventually your spirit leaves that physical body. Understand that as spiritual beings, we create from the non-physical to the physical. So you, the spirit, use your mind to make decisions and then you act that out in the physical realm. The only part of us that is physical really is the body. So you cannot touch the spirit, you cannot touch the mind, you cannot touch your willpower, and you also cannot touch your emotions. With this covered, I want to make it abundantly clear that we are not equal. There are 8 billion people on this planet, hence we're at 8 billion levels of consciousness. When I say that we are not equal, I'm not saying that you should not treat people fairly. However, it is important that you understand that we are not equal. We are not equal physically. There are people that can probably lift 500 pounds and then there are people that can barely lift 5 pounds. Again, this is on the physical level. When it comes to the level of willpower, for example, there are some people that are highly disciplined and then there are other people that are very neurotic, compulsive, and impulsive. When it comes to the mind, then there are some people that are highly intelligent and other people that are not so much. And the same applies to our emotional maturity. There are some people that we associate with enlightenment, such as the different sages. This is what I refer to as your Buddha consciousness, Christ consciousness, and so on. And then there are other people that are the complete opposite of that. Hence, as we go through this lesson, I want to remind you to not project your consciousness. We are talking about pathological narcissists. And when we're talking about pathologies, then we're talking about the study of diseases and the study of disorders. This means then that pathological narcissists do not think like you. Pathological narcissism is a psycho-spiritual illness. And when we're talking about the psyche, we're talking about the personality or what we have here listed as the soul. So we're talking about an impairment at the level of their mind power, their willpower, and their emotions. And additionally, there is an impairment at the level of spirit because they're dealing with someone that abandoned themselves. Before we delve deeper into the connection between pathological narcissism and shame, I want to share a quick quote with you from spiritual teacher and author Eckhart Tolle. If her past were your past, her pain, your pain, her level of consciousness, your level of consciousness, you would think and act exactly as she does. With this realization comes forgiveness, compassion, and peace. Understand that all 8 billion humans on planet Earth have varying abilities on the physical level, emotional level, mind level, and the level of willpower. And when it comes to spiritual abilities, again, we're all at various levels. In today's lesson, the faculty that we're going to focus on are our emotions. So we're going to delve deeper into understanding emotional maturity emotional intelligence, or emotional awareness. First, let's do a quick overview of shame versus guilt. These emotions are similar as they are close in vibration. However, as complex emotions, they differ significantly in their origin, focus, and impact on one's psyche. Understand that shame is focused on oneself, whereas guilt is focused on what one has done. 
Shame is an internal emotion that stems from a negative evaluation of oneself. It arises from a belief that one is inherently flawed, unworthy, or unlovable. Shame often originates from early childhood experiences, criticism, or abuse, and it becomes deeply ingrained in a person's self-concept. Shame focuses on the self. When someone experiences shame, they feel that there is something fundamentally wrong with who they are as a person. It's a feeling of being exposed and vulnerable, leading to a desire to hide or disappear. Shame is a highly destructive emotion. It can lead to low self-esteem, social withdrawal, depression, and even self-destructive behaviors. People burdened by shame often struggle with self-acceptance and forming healthy relationships. When it comes to shame and pathological narcissists, understand that pathological narcissists have a thorn that is in the middle of their back. And this thorn has been there since their childhood years. We're talking about their developmental years. And because this thorn is in the middle of their back, they are unable to reach it. Over time, what happens is they have accepted this pain. They now think this pain is normal. So when you come along bright-eyed and bushy-tailed wanting to help them, they will not accept your help. Firstly, they believe that if you try to help them, this is going to put them in more pain. And at another level, they believe that you trying to help them is you trying to manipulate them. They will not be vulnerable enough for you to help them with their pain, with their deep-seated inner shame. So, narcissists continue to live with this deep-seated inner shame this thorn that is in the middle of their back. And the longer the thorn is there, the more pain they're in and the deeper they get into shame. What is the shame that we're talking about here? We're talking about pathologically low self-esteem. Self-esteem so low that they'd probably have to look up to see it. Pathological narcissists will not accept your love. They believe that they are unworthy. And the more you try to love them, the more you will see that it makes them irritated. They are unable to receive your love and they are also unable to give you love. They did not develop to that emotional awareness level. Let's go ahead and adjust our sales slightly and talk about guilt. One level up from shame is where we find guilt. And guilt, on the other hand, arises from a specific action or behavior that a person perceives as morally or ethically wrong. Guilt, again, is focused on one's behavior. It is a reaction to one's own actions, not the self, as a whole. Healthy guilt often results from empathy and an understanding of the impact of one's behavior on others. Guilt focuses on the action. When someone experiences guilt, they feel remorse and responsibility for a particular behavior. Guilt often leads to a desire to make amends, apologize, or change the behavior in question. When someone experiences guilt, they feel remorse and responsibility for a particular behavior. Healthy guilt often leads to a desire to make amends, apologize, or change the behavior in question. Guilt can be a constructive emotion. Healthy guilt can promote pro-social behavior, moral development, and empathy. It can lead to individuals to take responsibility for their actions, make reparations, and work towards personal growth and better relationships. It is important to understand here, however, we are not talking about healthy guilt because we are talking about pathological narcissists. And a pathology is the study of diseases. It is the study of disorders. 
Hence, pathological narcissists have disordered shame. They have unhealthy shame. They have disordered guilt. They have unhealthy guilt. They have disordered anger, unhealthy anger, which is why they throw rage fits, which is essentially an adult tantrum. You are dealing with someone that does not know how to adequately manage or monitor their emotions, and this is why they need you to do it for them. Understand again that we're talking about psycho-spiritual arrested development. We're talking about emotional immaturity. So when it comes to shame, instead of letting go of shame, they're actually running from their shame. And when they run from their shame, they're unable to move past their pride. And as you know, the popular saying, pride cometh before the fall. So they fall back down to shame. What you are witnessing is an episode of Groundhog's Day. So they're going to run past their shame and they also don't face healthy guilt. It is a disordered guilt. It is dysregulated guilt. So when it comes to guilt, then they're going to guilt trip you. Pathological narcissists do not feel true remorse about their behavior. If they felt true remorse about their behavior, then they would stop. Narcissistic abuse is a cycle after all. So they do not like to feel guilt. They're going to run past their guilt try to run past their fear, but again, they're going to top out at pride, and again, pride cometh before the fall, and they're going to fall back down to shame. So what you're dealing with is someone that is in a shame, guilt, anger, pride cycle, and they are unable to ascend. Understand that pathological narcissists have been in this shame, pride cycle long before you came along. When you check the emotional maturity age of most pathological narcissists, you will see where it's somewhere between the ages of about 5 and 12 years old. Again, we're talking about arrested development. So on the physical level, they developed. However, behind the physical veil, everything else is underdeveloped. And this is why you hear me refer to them as underdeveloped souls. Or this is why clinicians state that they have a personality disorder. In summary, guilt is about feeling bad for something one has done. Shame is about feeling bad about who one is. Guilt can be a catalyst for positive change and growth, whereas shame tends to erode self-worth and hinder personal growth. Recognizing and understanding these emotions is essential for emotional well-being and forming healthy relationships. Let's go ahead and delve deeper into shame. So when we take a look at the Hawkins scale or the map of consciousness, you will see where shame is all the way down there at level 20. Now, there is nothing wrong with feeling shame or feeling guilt or feeling anger. However, the problem comes in when someone is stuck in shame. Pathological narcissists are shame-based people. They are rooted in their shame. And what I mean by that is every day that the narcissist wakes up, they are in shame. And at best, they get to the level of pride. This is why you hear me state often that pathological narcissists are people that are stuck in in the third dimension. They're stuck in victim abuser consciousness. As we go through this section, we're going to be taking references from Dr. David R. Hawkins's Power Versus Force. And this is the book that is recommended at the end of module one, Understanding Your Multidimensional Nature in the NARC 101 course. NARC 101, the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Course, is more than a course. It is a lifeline. In this course, you will learn how to identify abusive dynamics, understand the impact of abuse on your emotional and mental well-being, and also it will help you to gain strategies for healing and personal growth. The links to take this course will be in the description section, and NARC 101 is a free course. Let's go ahead and jump back into shame. 
shame which is at level 20 is perilously proximate to death. So understand that we're talking about death of the consciousness, a suicide of the consciousness, because again, we are spirit or consciousness, life, force, source, source, energy, operating a human body with the access to different tools. If someone is stuck in shame, then they have consciously or unconsciously failed to take the steps to prolong life. And again, you are the life. You are the life force. You are the consciousness. Understand that trauma is anything that pushes the spirit down to shame. It's going to push the spirit down into low self-esteem. Early life experiences such as neglect, abuse, torture, etc. can lead to shame. And this warps the personality often for a lifetime, unless these issues are resolved by therapy. Shame, as Freud determined, produces neuroses. It is destructive to the emotional and psychological health, and as a consequence of low self-esteem, makes one prone to the development of physical illnesses. Oftentimes, you will see where pathological narcissists struggle with emotional regulation issues. So this could manifest itself as them being severely depressed or them being anxious, again, being very neurotic. Additionally, understand that when we're talking about pathological narcissists, we're talking about people that are addicts. All pathological narcissists are people addicts. You are dealing with someone that is addicted to people. So this is a type of energy vampirism. It is a type of energy parasitism. So they need other people's energies to survive. Additionally, they may have other addictions such as substance abuse addictions. We're talking about alcohol, pills, opioids, etc., you could be dealing with a narcissist that is also a sex addict or a porn addict. Some narcissists may also develop hoarding type behaviors or shopping addictions. Understand again that we manifest from the non-physical to the physical. So if someone is highly disordered on the inside, then you will eventually see this highly disordered behavior on the outside. And this may manifest itself as addiction. Shame is also used as a tool of cruelty, and its victims often become cruel themselves. Shamed children are cruel to animals and cruel to each other. The behavior of people whose consciousness level is only in the 20s is dangerous. They are prone to hallucinations of an accusatory nature as well as paranoia. Some become psychotic or even commit bizarre crimes. Understand that pathological narcissists did not develop to the level of rational thinking, hence they are irrational. Again, we're talking about pathologies here. You're dealing with people that are stuck in the third dimension and to be able to think rationally at minimum, you would have to be able to reach the fourth dimension or higher. This is the green section here on the map of consciousness. Not only are pathological narcissists stuck in the third dimension, most times they are in the first dimension. Every day that pathological narcissists wake up, they are in shame and they are on the hunt for other people's energy. They need other people's attention, validation, admiration and reflection in order for them to feel better about themselves. Again, you're dealing with people that are based in their ego because they have abandoned their true selves. As we continue to read through Power versus Force, Dr. David R. Hawkins writes, some shame-based individuals compensate by perfectionism and rigidity and often become driven and intolerant. Notorious examples of this are the moral extremists who form vigilante groups projecting their own unconscious shame onto others whom they then feel justified in righteously attacking or killing. 
Serial killers have often acted out of sexual moralism with the justification of punishing so-called bad women. Because it pulls down the whole level of one's personality, shame results in a vulnerability to the other negative emotions and therefore often produces false pride, anger, and guilt. Pathological narcissists, the narcopaths, the antisocials, etc. have not transcended the level of shame. And if someone believes that they are unworthy of love, then they do not love themselves. And someone that does not have love to give themselves is also unable to give love to others. I really do hope that in today's lesson, it has illuminated the reasons behind pathological narcissist irrational behavior. Because they are based in shame, they are at such a low vibration energy, and you can think of all of this as a battery meter. The higher you go, the more energy you have. The higher you go, the more positive you are. Pathological narcissists are running on fumes. And if you think about this like the gas tank in a car, then they're running on E. They are running on fumes. And because they are unable to generate all of this energy internally, they need to plug into different energy sources. They need to plug into different sources of supply. People that are based in shame or people that are at such a low vibrational level will drain the life out of you because, again, they really do not have the energy to give to themselves. This is why understanding the link between shame and narcissism is crucial for both identifying narcissistic traits and approaching individuals with understanding while maintaining healthy boundaries. There is no amount of love or kindness or compassion that you can give to a pathological narcissist because they are unable to receive it. You are pouring all of your love and kindness and compassion into a black hole. All of your love and kindness and compassion are going to evaporate right there at the third dimension, right there at the level of pride because they are unable to ascend. And because they are unable to ascend, you must descend down to their level. Empathetic, kind people, light workers, star seeds, chosen ones, etc. You have no business being in the third dimension. People that are stuck in the third dimension will only drain you of your energy because they are unable to ascend. They have not carried their cross which is why they need you to carry their cross for them. Instead of facing their shadows, their shadows have overpowered them. And there you have it, folks, a glimpse into the labyrinth of shame and its connection with pathological narcissism. As we close this chapter, ponder on the wisdom of Eckhart Tolle in Stillness Speaks. When you are unaware of that inner essence, in the end, you always create misery. When you don't know who you are, you create a mind-made self, a substitute for your beautiful divine being and cling to that fearful and needy self. Protecting and enhancing that false sense of self then becomes your primary motivating force. Understand that pathological narcissists are not authentic individuals. They have identified with their false self. They have identified with their egos. You're dealing with people that are programmed backwards. Thank you for joining us today. Stay tuned for more empowering insights. If you appreciate the content, please give this video a like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more empowering content. Until next time, continue to embrace your authenticity and continue to thrive. I'll see you in the next lesson.